Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. And today we're going to look in on Blue, my 55 gallon worm bin that was made out of a 55 gallon barrel with both ends stuck together. Now today the topic of choice is going to be how do you take worm castings and make them work with your organic fertilizer so that the timing is right for the release of nutrients for your plants. All right, first things first, I'm gonna have a look here and see if I can get some of these castings today because pretty soon it is going to be garlic planting season. So I've got a bucket over here and I'm just gonna grab some stuff off the top. <clears throat> Hopefully I can get another four gallons here that would make me happy that would give me enough um, to get my garlic in for this year here in zone five six in illinois it takes about eight months to grow garlic so it doesn't make any sense to try and put all the nutrients in all at the same time because they would just use them all up okay we're getting close and because of the wedge system, there are no worms here. And it is a little bit drier. And no, I have not found my screen. I don't, maybe I loaned it to somebody. I'm gonna have to buy another quarter inch screen. Because I now have about 40 gallons of castings that need to be sifted. Uh, but you know, winter's coming, so I'm not gonna have anything better to do than to do a deep dive and find that and uh, hopefully sift my castings. All right, I think that's about all I'm gonna try and get right now, but that's almost five gallons. All right, so let's have a look at deep down under here. And I'm still seeing a couple of worms deep down in here. The moisture's still pretty good. It's 81 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement. 54% humidity, so the humidity part is going down, but the temperature has not started going down. I still have the air conditioning running here, so uh, the hope of getting any cooler, you know, in the basement's not, not very good. Whatever it is outside is pretty much what you're gonna get in the basement. So I'm just gonna keep turning this over. Now, if you're new here, this is a wedge system, and so what I'm trying to do here is to make sure this end dries out so that the worms will move to the opposite end, which is where I do the feeding. And while I'm doing the fluffing to get more air in there, I am pulling out the large particles that I'm finding, like pumpkin stems or avocado shells. Pulling those out because those sometimes take more than one cycle to go through the bin. All right, so that's looking good. There's really not a lot of worms down here, so I imagine we're gonna still be able to get another harvest the next time I'm in here. So the part that I'm working on right now probably was fed about five months ago, maybe six months ago, which is why there's very few worms and it's dry. And yes, I'm in here without a glove, but I don't have any cuts on my hands. And because I am a healthy individual, it is not going to bother me. It, if you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. You do you. I've been doing a lot of gardening my whole life, and I have yet to ever get any kind of weird infection from digging in the dirt or in my worm farm. So anyway, back to the uh, organic gardening fertilizers. So they're not really time release that's not really the right word to use for it but they're not instantaneously available and so they do need to be broke down by the microbes in the soil uh, before they are available to be used by the plants and one of the things that at least in my experience I have noticed that my plants do a lot better now that I have worm castings 
And I think there's something to that. So all the good microbes that are happening in the worm castings are making that organic fertilizer, I don't know, made out of blood and bone and fish meal and kelp meal and stuff like that. I think that the, the same microbes that help get everything dissolved in a worm bin also help get all of that nutrients out of that organic fertilizer as well. So I don't have to rely on whatever's in the soil itself. I'm adding my own. So when I'm planting anything pretty much and pretty soon here, my first frost is usually about October 15th. So in a couple of weeks, I will be planting garlic. Even though it will frost, it's still okay to have the garlic brand new in the ground. It will start to grow roots for me. So the part that I'm getting to now probably was fed about four months ago. So when I go in and planting things, and there's that same Amazon thing, I'm gonna take it out. But like I was saying, it doesn't really matter what I'm planting. It just happens to be that I'm going to be planting garlic soon. I just got my box from MI Gardener, not affiliated. But they've got good stuff and at a good price. So win-win, I'm close to it. So the shipping is not really bad for me. And I had good luck with the ones that I bought last year. So I do hard neck garlic. So it takes about eight months. I'm gonna plant it in October and I will very likely harvest it in July. That seems to be the history of at least what I've been doing. So I go ahead and I put some worm castings and some organic fertilizer in every hole and then the all the little microorganisms in here, possibly even some worms, will help turn that into bioavailable nutrients for the garlic. All right, let me move you down to the business end of the bin. Okay, last time we did feed some pretty extreme stuff. We put in some broccoli stems. I wouldn't expect those to be 100% gone by now because they are almost wood-like by the time they uh, are done in the year. So that's part of it. Looks like I forgot some tape in here. Pull that out. I am smelling a little broccoliness. But nothing bad, bad. I mean, sometimes if it's bad, bad, it like hits you like a ton of bricks and this is not that. So this is worked over. I'm moving that down this way so that I can make room down here for today's feeding. And anytime I find any sort of large food, I'm gonna be moving that down. Now, I don't know if I can hold still long enough, but we have like a mite bloom right here because this is some very tough stuff, this woody stalk of a broccoli. So the mites are coming in to help out the worms so that they can get to the food a little bit faster. I don't do any sort of control. I think if you go back to some of my really old videos, I did try to use neem cake. I've since given up on all of that. I don't think that it's worth it. Um, and I honestly think that when I did try to put neem cake and whatnot, in the worm bin, I think that the effect that I was seeing from that was just the effect of time. I don't think that the the neem cake was actually doing anything for the mites, quite honestly, or the springtails, which I don't like, they creep me out. So uh, I think it was just time. So that's kind of my, my advice currently, is that if you have a bloom of any particular kind of insect, that you just give it some time. And when they are done doing what they need to do, then they will kind of die off and their populations will go down very, very low. And then when you put something in there that needs their help, then the population will go back up. So if you are interested in how many different kinds of worms I have in this bin, the last video was, okay, this is tape. So this is like the uh, compostable tape and you can tell it's kind of turned into like glue stuff. I'm gonna bury that. But the last conversation that we had in this bin was whether or not multiple species of worms 
um, can actually live together or if that causes problems. I will put a link at the end if you have not seen that video. That was something that I had lots of questions about when I was new to worm farming is, you know, are, is it okay? So you can watch that video. And then let's see, keep going here. There, I've got a big feeding. Of course, it's the end of the season. And believe it or not, the outdoor worm bins are getting as much food as the indoor bins are. It is time to tear things out. I'll put some pictures up there for you. So the worm tower and just the worms that live in the beds themselves will have more than enough food for a good long time. Mo many of my brassicas did not actually give me any fruit, so I figure by the time you get to October, if they haven't done it at all, they're not going to. So that is why they have been evicted and start getting fed to the worms. If they're going to do something, at the very least it can be feed the worms, right? I feel the same way about leftovers and anything that goes bad before I get to eat it. I figure at the very least it's not a complete waste. It still annoys me if I buy something and it doesn't make it to a meal. But I have the peace of mind of knowing that at the very least the worms will get to eat it and it will become nutrients and soil amendments for my garden next year. All right, we're doing good. No proper worm ball, but a good density of worm down there and they did an amazing job. I'll put a picture of what that feeding looked like last time. It is absolutely insane how much they got done in the last three and a half weeks. All right, well, we've got our, our base here of all of our old stuff. Now let me get some bedding. Okay, first things first, get some egg cartons kind of distributed, got those wet. They don't go through the shredder very good, so this is what we do. And then let me get them their food. This is over a gallon, and it is a combination of vegetables and pasta and grain. And honestly, the reason they're getting all of this is because I'm having a mouse apocalypse. So they got into the rice, they got into the lasagna noodles, uh, they got into the everything. All my dry goods have probably been contaminated by the stupid mice. That's okay, I think I'm winning. The cats and I are winning. Pretty soon it won't be a problem. But that is over a gallon of food, probably weighed five or six pounds. Now let's get them some bedding to cover that up so that the other bugs and critters in the basement will not find it. All right, there we go. That's about eight gallons of prepared bedding on there, mostly shredded cardboard. And it's just been sitting in uh, water for a day or so. And then I'm just gonna give this part a little sprinkle of the castings because I did not do that when I made the bedding. So this will get the microbes working on this a little bit faster so the worms have it available. Put in the comments below how you use your worm castings. You know, do you put it in there with fertilizer or do you just use the worm castings? All right, well, if you like the spin, I have a whole playlist that I will put right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this one over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.